I am Govindan. I am going to teach chemistry. First lesson, atomic structure two. Atomic structure two, because already you learned it is atomic structure one in eleventh standard sir. Yes. So in this lesson, you can expect for board exam ten marks. Out of ten, one. Two one mark question, then one three mark question, one five mark question, all together ten mark. So the weightage, you keep on blueprint. Two one mark question, one three mark question, and one five mark question, all together ten mark. Okay. So, what is atomic structure? Well, that means. In this lesson, fully we are going to learn about the structure of atom. What is atom? Atom is the smallest particle. Further cannot be divided. This is old concept. But nowadays, the proved one, atom is the smallest particle. Okay, but atom containing some subatomic particles, namely proton, electron, neutron, all those things. Okay. Okay. Now, today first we are going to learn about the properties of electron. Electrons are dual character. What do you mean dual character? Dual. Dual mean One is a particle character, another one is wave character. It's a proved one. Okay, electron has the dual character. One is a particle nature, another one is wave nature. So first in this lesson, the first important three mark question: What is the difference between particle and wave? What is the difference between particle and wave character? First point: Particles are localized in space. All particles are localized in space. For example, this is one particle; it occupies one space. But here, it is delocalized. Particles are localized. These are delocalized. So, particle means each and every particle in the world occupying localized particular space. But what about wave? Delocalized. For example, think about this room. See sound wave also is there, then light wave, so many waves. So the, there are delocalized. Then second one is these are not interfere, not interfere because in a particular space already one object is occupied means cannot occupy another particular same space. Cannot occupy another particular same space because already one particle is occupied. So that particles are not interfere. But if we think about wave, more than two waves can coexist simultaneously. Think about here, the sound wave as well as light wave. So so many waves can coexist simultaneously. So that there is waves are interfere. Okay. Then what about the total value? Think about this much uh, space. How many atoms? How many particles present? How to count? Just think about this all. This all totally. One teacher and 35 students is there. Means how to think total number of students? You have to count all the students. Likewise, how many particles present mean? You have to count all the particles. So the total value is equal to that sum. Total value is equal to that sum. Equal to that sum. But here the resultant wave may be larger or smaller. The resultant wave may be Larger or smaller due to interference. Very important three mark question. What is the difference between particle and wave character? First character, particles are localized in space. Waves are delocalized in space. Then, for example, grain of sand or pen, pencil, any object, these are delocalized. Then particles are not interfere because in the particular place only one object only can interfere. What about wave? More than two waves can coexist, so that waves that are interfere. Here, total value is equal to their sum. Here, the result larger or smaller due to interference. Very important three mark question. The next question, very important five mark question. How to prove electron act as the wave nature? There are there are two experiment. How to prove electron act as the uh, wave nature? One is the de Broglie. One is the Davison Jermos experiment, another one is with the Thomson's experiment. The first experiment, how to prove electron act as the wave character through 
Davis and Germos experiment. Davis and Germos experiment. In the year of 1927, Davis and Germos observed a beam of electrons from heated tungsten filament. These electrons are oxidated using high positive potential. These electrons are allowed to fall on the nickel crystal. These electrons are scattered in different direction. See, in the year of 1927, Davison and Germos observed a beam of electrons from heated tungsten filament. These electrons are accelerated using high positive potential. These accelerated electrons are allowed to fall on the nickel crystal. This is nickel crystal. This is an incident beam of electrons. This is an incident ray or incident beam of electrons. So these electrons are allowed to fall on the nickel crystal. Now these electrons scattered in different direction. This cat, this is a photographic plate kept over here. This is a photographic plate. Okay. Now these electrons are scattered in different direction. This scattering wave is almost similar to that of Bragg's X-ray diffraction method. Already for uh, already the Bragg is confirmed for X-rays. The scattering wave is almost equal to the Bragg's experiment. That is already proved one X-rays are wave nature. This diffraction method also almost equal to the Bragg's X-ray diffraction method. So you can come to conclusion this electrons also wave nature. Okay. So in the year of uh, 1927, Davis and Germos are observed a beam of electrons from heated tungsten filament. These electrons are accelerated using high positive potential. These, these electrons are allowed to fall on the nickel crystal. Now these electrons are scattered in different direction. This, this diffracted wave is almost similar to that of Bragg's X-ray diffraction method. That X-rays are wave nature and the proved one. This diffracted wave also almost similar to that of Bragg's X-ray. So that is also wave nature. So this is the diffraction pattern. Diffraction patterns are this is the so diffraction pattern. Okay. You have to show both the diagrams with the five markers. And one more experiment also is that how to prove electron access the wave nature through GP Thompson experiment. The next experiment, almost everything same method like the Davidson German experiment, but only two different. Only two different. That is the GP Thompson's experiment. GP Thompson's experiment. Uh, uh, here this is the incident beam of electrons. This uh, crystal. Here he used instead of nickel crystal, he used thin plate of gold. Thin plate of Gold. Now, this photographic plate is kept perpendicular to the incident beam of electrons. This is the photographic plate. This is kept e per perpendicular to the incident beam of electrons. Now, the electrons are scattered like this. Okay. This is the incident beam of electrons. beam of electrons. This is a, a gold foil. This is a scattering way. This is a photographic plate. Photographic plate. The diffraction pattern also very same like Davis and German experiment. Diffraction pattern. Very same like Davis and German experiment. Because both experiments are proved, electron access the wave nature. So only two different from Davis and Germain experiment. One is in Davis and Germain experiment they used thin foil of uh, nickel crystal here gold. Another one is 
the photographic plate is kept perpendicular to the emission zoom of electron only two difference from davis and germer experiment so these two experiments are proved electron access the wave nature they can ask question how to prove electron access the wave nature these two experiment you can prove it so next question how to prove electron access the particle nature how to prove electron access the particle nature okay now electrons are passing through the zinc sulfide screen this nothing but think about the screen made up of zinc sulfide so electrons are passing through the zinc sulfide screen now electrons are produced on scintillation electron not spread out whole the screen all electrons are produced on scintillation now the scintillation is localized on the zinc sulfide screen okay so that only particles are producing scintillation not electrons okay not other things so that electron now electrons are passing through the zinc sulfide screen now electrons are producing on scintillation electrons are not spread out full whole screen electrons are produce scintillation so that that is only particle nature mean particles only producing scintillation so electrons producing scintillation from this experiment we can come to conclusion electrons are particle nature the next method is then in the gp thomson's e by m charge by mass e by m value calculation calculation experiment also confirmed one electron is a particle nature not only e by m value calculation that uh, mulligan coil trap experiment also proved one mulligan coil trap experiment also tells about electrons are particle nature then black body radiation photoelectric effect these all the experiments are confirmed electron access the particle nature so first experiment through zinc sulfide screen this is a zinc sulfide screen now electrons are passing through the zinc sulfide screen now electrons not spread out whole the screen electrons are producing scintillation on the zinc sulfide screen so not a wave particle only producing scintillation so that electrons are producing scintillation means this indicate electrons are particle nature then the gp thomson the e by m value calculation and mulligan coil trap experiment mulligan oil drop experiment and uh, photoelectric effect photoelectric effect and black body radiation all the experiments are the proved one electron access the particle character so electrons are dual nature one is a particle and the one is a wave So how to differ? What is the difference between first question? What is the difference between particle and wave? Particles are localized, waves are delocalized. These are not interfere. That is interfere because more than two waves can can coexist. In case the total value is equal to their sum, but in the case of wave, wave may be larger or smaller due to interference. How to prove electron access the this one uh, wave nature through two experiment you can prove it the first experiment is a uh, davis and germo experiment in the year of 1927 davis and germo have observed a beam of electrons from heated tungsten filament these electrons are accelerated using high positive potential these electrons are allowed to fall on the nickel crystal now these electrons are scattered in different direction this scattering way is almost similar to that of bragg's x-ray diffraction method that is already proved one x rays are wave nature this scattering wave also almost equal to that experiment so that we can come to conclusion electrons are wave nature the next experiment the next year itself year of 1928 gp thomson did the experiment he used everything very same manner like davis and germer only two different he used the instead of nickel a tin foil of gold and another one is he kept the photographic plate perpendicular to the emission zoom of electrons this experiment also proved uh, confirmed electron uh, electrons are wave nature the next experiment how to prove electron access the particle nature mean these two experiment that is a zinc sulfide screen electrons are passing through the zinc sulfide screen now electrons are produce scintillation not spread out whole the screen so now electrons supposed wave nature mean electrons are wave nature mean it must be spread all over the full screen not produce uh, not spread out whole the screen is produce scintillation so particles only produce scintillation so from this experiment we can come to conclusion electrons are particle nature then gp thomson that uh, e by m value calculation 
and the mulligan coil trap experiment also proved one electrons are particle nature then increasing concept of photoelectric effect and the black body radiation these experiments were confirmed electron accept the particle nature